Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I know I'm in my lounge, but basically I'm about to go down to Dublin, but it's super windy down there. So I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to talk to you and how much of this video is going to have to be a voiceover because basically today I am going out into the hayfield to do some canter work to find out exactly where I am with Dublin's fitness because I want to be starting interval training with her. So she had 10 days off after the VHS. She's been in work now for a while without hacking, doing all sorts of things like that. And she's just sort of started canter work. But whilst our hacking is lovely, there's not really anywhere to canter. You can get like a 20 second strip up the side of a small field or something like that. It's not enough to get her fit. And we have got the school, but again, it's on the small side and with her arthritis and her age, I just don't like to make her go round and round in small circles. We do practice our canter transitions and I do canter transitions on the lunge, but I do not canter her on the lunge like fully. Um, and I don't do it schooling either. It's just not fair on her. But I do have a hayfield that I need to utilise being able to use until it gets closed in the new year. Like in this sort of like February, March time, it will get shut and I can't go cantering around it. So I need to utilise having that hayfield, don't I really? So I've been doing all my research on interval training and I've got my plan of action, but I've got my chest cam on the GoPro and yeah, let's go. So, yep, yeah, it's me and my voiceovers. Dragged this one in from the field and got her tacked up. You've seen me tack up like a hundred times, so I didn't want to go into too much detail, but I did get the GoPro, so that's cool. So, welcome to the new angle. Right, so heading out to the hayfield, and that's the arena on the left hand side. So, our hayfield is literally just up this strip. And basically, Brad will have it shut off um, whenever it's time for the grass to be fertilized or grow or whatever it is it does in order to make hay but we have this field just up here that you can see and behind it we have another field which we call five acre um, I only stayed in this field to begin with I think when I'm having to canter her further I will start using five acre but that is a much steeper hill not one I can canter down anyway right I used my Apple watch in order to do my timings I did a lot of research online, so basically everything I'm telling you here, I am not an expert. This is just what I did research-wise online. And I started off with the minute walk, two minutes trot, minute walk, three minutes trot, minute walk, four minutes trot, and I did it on both reins. Her fitness in trot is way better than in canter. She's doing about 10 minutes of trotting on the lunge, when I lunge it and when we go out hacking, we obviously can get quite a few places in that we can do some trot work. So yeah, that's effectively what I did. I did a small little warm up and then I've done my minute walk and now I'm doing my first minute of trot. Now I'm not gonna bore you with our full 40 minute session because that would be insane. But basically, I had to make sure I was doing everything equally on both reins. This footage is giving me like serious motion sickness though. Like I swear to God, I, she's not lame. It's, I don't know what's going on here. Um, but yeah, you have to make sure you're doing it equally on both reins. So like I said, I did my minute walk, my two minutes trot, my minute walk, my three minutes trot, my minute walk and my four minutes trot. And I did that on both reins going around the field. I then actually gave her, I think I gave her like a three minute walk before I started my canter work, purely because I know she's not fit for cantering. So I wanted just to make sure that she wasn't knackered before I started. Another minute of trot and a circle and then I went into my canter. Now what I need to do is work out a way of setting alarms on my phone I think because Having to kind of like set timers on my watch whilst I'm trotting or whilst I was cantering was really difficult. Whereas I think I could like set alarms and if I named them like walk, trot, walk, trot, canter or what have you, I can just turn the alarms off and the next one will go off at the right time. So that's something I'm going to look into next. Anyway, this was our first canter. She was really, really keen. This is where I really wished I had gloves on, but I'm really, really pleased I put my brakes in because... 
she just loves mm. coming out here for some cantering. It's always such a good field. Even in the summer, the kind of like hedge line's really soft. So we do come out here and do a lot of cantering. So she does understand that this field is kind of for that. So she gets very, very keen. Um, I've tried to leave some of the GoPro footage in, but I, I don't actually talk to her very much. I know that sounds really mean, but she kind of, I don't know. She doesn't need it. She doesn't warrant yeah. it. And I'm a bit of a silent rider, I guess. Uh, this is me having to take quite a large pull. Um, I know that looks drastic, but we are coming up to the downhill section. And at this point, she was just running away with me. Um, so I do need to work on some manners as well as this interval training. Ooh. So that was our first canter done and she was a little bit puffy, but not too much. I was actually really pleased. I just walked her down across the diagonal of the field because I had a two minute walk now at this section. So I managed to get all the way across. I did give her quite a long rein just to kind of let her stretch because she had done the four minutes trot before this. So I was going to walk her for the two minutes and then I did another two minutes trot before I went in to do our two minutes of canter. The weather really changed at this point and it was actually getting really quite warm. Um, she'd got quite hot and sticky. So I did sort of take my time with this walk, let her fully stretch before we kicked off again. So here goes the second canter and oh my God, she tried shooting straight <laughs> off with me. She is such a madam. And then she just bore her head down and was gone. So yeah, again, manners and probably actually I need to put her in her tongue thumb, not the Pelham because the Pelham she just leans on. Anyway, at least she's powering off and she's feeling strong as in, in her body, in her back legs. We just need to sort out the manners, I think, and the actual fitness overall. So this was all uphill. I started the other canter uphill again, trying to keep it really equal on both reins and then basically up at this top of the field there is just a big flat area. So I was starting off with my uphill stretch and then just circling her at the top. Um, as we came up here, actually, Chloe was on the side of the field with her quad I'm bike wrong leg. and it kind of freaked her out. So she went to stop because I took a half hole. It was too much, no. asked again. And then she spotted her again and ooh, off we went. She just no. decided to stick her head in the air and try and tank away from it. So that was fun because now we're heading downhill. Deep. Deep. Ooh. So that was our final two minutes up and I dropped back to trot and I actually let her have a long stretchy trot. Some of my research was that you don't want to just let them completely collapse into a really slow walk to begin with. You have to sort of let them stretch it out. So I just did another sort of half circle in trot on a long rein, encouraged her to stretch the head down and sort of slow down gradually. We then walked the entire field one more time. I just wanted to make sure she had completely stopped puffing and actually it didn't take her too long to come back to complete, you know, breathing normally. So whilst she's not brilliantly fit, she's not far off. So that wasn't too bad for our first session. So, point number one, we both definitely need to get fitter. The four minutes total of canter is enough for us at the minute. So basically, like I said, that's our first session. Um, I'm gonna stick to the two minutes of cantering um, for probably a few weeks until that's really easy for her, basically. The trot work is fit. We trot loads out hacking. She trots on the lunge. Um, you know, that's absolutely fine. It is purely the cantering I need to get fitter. Um, I'm currently just walking her off now and I will do so until she stops puffing basically. And then we'll go in and have a nice bit of a cold shower on her legs and a wash off. But yes, I'm happy with that. It's not as fit as I obviously would like her, but I need to remember that in the showing season, we had a biblically hot summer this summer. So I wasn't able to be doing loads of fast work with her. Um, she then had her little break, but yeah, I have access to this field and the one behind it until March. So that's good. I also want to plan some trips to the Gallops. 
um yeah i just wanna i used to have her really fit basically before i came here because we had just amazing hacking for cantering but since living here whilst it's absolutely idyllic you just can't get out the canter so yeah we're gonna go in now and have a nice little shower hose off her legs even though the ground is really soft i just think giving her a bit of a cold hose is nice for her because it's quite strenuous work it's the most cantering she's done for a while like four minutes with a two minute gap is it's not a lot by any means but it's a lot for her so yeah we'll go in and uh, get her all washed off Right, well any horse that's worked that hard, bless her heart, is going to get a nice little wash down. So I'm just using a non-rinse wash and I have actually got colder water just because I wanted to get the bits of sweat off that she had. She is allergic to her own sweat, it's a hyperallergenic problem. Um, but ultimately the cold water also, I wanted to just cold hose her legs. Despite the fact that the ground was soft, it is kind of more strenuous work. So I did just want to kind of cool her legs down. Just that little bit, you can call me overprotective, I don't care, it's what I like to do. So that was her all washed off and happy. Whew, there we go, all washed off, I think she thoroughly enjoys that actually. It was a little bit hard for her that last minute on the second rain, I felt her get a little bit like, Ugh. so I'll definitely be sticking to the two minutes of canter. I then just basically walked around the field until she stopped puffing and then I made my way back down um, across the field. So she's had a really good call off and actually she came, she stopped puffing quicker than I thought she was going to. When I felt her get tired, I thought, oh, okay, maybe she's not actually that, you know, great, but she didn't actually take long to stop puffing. And then, yeah, as you've seen, I've given her a nice call off. So yeah, basically that is another little tour that we will be using over the winter. The good thing is that we have access to that field, but on the nights I get here and it's starting to get a little bit dark, I can still go out there and do like 20 minutes and not have to worry about the light. Um, we were out there for 40 minutes today, but you know, there are ways I can get out there in the winter when I've got a little bit less light. I've not got to go on the roads. I can go and get some canter work done and just get her that bit more cantering fit. I want that core to be a bit better, which is best with slow uphill canters. So very very lucky but yeah thank you for watching i need to go home for my shower now so we will see you next time say bye say bye bye